Hi there, I'm Tyler Ballhorn, and this is the Stock Scores Market Minutes for May 24th, 2013. This week's topic, key characteristics of chart patterns. Let's get right into that. All right, bullish chart patterns tend to show the same characteristics over many of the patterns that you will read about in technical analysis books. First, we see rising bottoms, which are a sign of optimism. There tends to be diminishing volatility through the pattern. And you'll see this in a moment when I show you an example. We also like to see breakouts through resistance from this low price volatility after the bottoms have been rising. And often the breakthrough resistance will come with abnormal price and often volume activity. All right, so let's take a long-term look at Google's chart. This is a three-year chart of Google. And we see these characteristics all combined on this chart. Now, the pattern that I've drawn on the chart with the red and green line is something called an ascending triangle. It's ascending because the bottoms are rising. The green line that I've drawn across the bottoms is rising from left to right. What that really means is that any time the sellers were in control of the market, able to push the market lower, they could not push it lower than the previous low. And the result is that you have these rising bottoms on the chart, which are an indication that the market is becoming more optimistic about the stock. Now, at the same time, there was an upper limit on what investors believed the fundamentals to be worth. I've drawn that in red. That's at about $650 a share. And you'll notice that over the span of about a year and a half, every time the stock got up to that price ceiling, it got stuck. Now, the fact that the red line and the green line are converging toward one another is an indication that the volatility in the stock is diminishing over time. In other words, the range of price movement is less. So generally speaking, this stock is going sideways, but on the right side of the triangle, there is very little volatility, and that is an indication that the buyers and sellers have come to some agreement about what the fundamentals are worth. Now, in August, you can see there was a week there where the stock made a breakthrough resistance and the price action was pretty strong. Now that's a show of excitement by investors. It's people saying, hey, we think the fundamentals of Google are finally worth more than $650 a share. And the result is that the stock then went into a pretty good upward trend out of that pattern. Now another couple of things to recognize about chart patterns is that uptrends tend to end with a break of the upward trend line but usually from a falling top. It's not very often that we see a break just of the upward trend line. It usually comes after a falling top. And this is very typical in the patterns of indexes like the S&P 500, the TSX 60, that sort of thing. Downward trends also tend to reverse after a break of the trend line, but in this case, from a rising bottom. And in fact, if you get a break of the trend line after a rising bottom has formed, you are more likely to see a trend reversal than if there is no rising bottom. Now here's a chart of First Solar, and again, this is a three-year weekly chart because I often use shorter-term charts. I wanted to show how this works on a longer-term chart as well. But notice back in uh, early 2011, I have identified with those horizontal red lines the falling top on the chart. That was a sign that the buyers just were losing their strength. And a few weeks later, the stock broke the upward trend line that I've drawn in green, and that started the downward trend. Now, fast forward to the middle or the spring of 2012, and you can see that the downward trend line was broken, a rising bottom was formed, and then a break higher from the rising bottom. And that began the upward trend line that has seen the stock more than double in about a year. In fact, less than a year. So these very simple patterns will help you find winning stocks. All right, let's take a look at the uh, charts now and analyze like we do every week. This is the weekly chart of the S&P 500. You can see that the trend has gone somewhat parabolic. And last week we hit a new high, but closed below the open. That is a pretty good signal that there will be some selling pressure in the next little while. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to see a sharp correction, but a pullback would be quite reasonable. At a minimum, I think the market goes sideways for a little while, but I do think that there is some potential for a pullback. Here's a chart of the Canadian market, and it rallied into resistance last week before it got stuck. And it doesn't really have as far to fall as the U.S. markets because it hasn't got that parabolic upward trend. 
but it does have that strong resistance to deal with and I think it's going to take some time to get through that and so I'm neutral to slightly bearish on the Canadian market in the short term. Treasury bonds are in a pennant pattern. The trend into the pennant is up and therefore the expectation is that it will move up out of this pattern. Now of course an upward move in treasuries means a lower yield and that is good for business. Lower yields means uh, the cost of borrowing is less. We are at some support over the last four weeks. We've seen treasuries pull back a little bit and uh, that's uh, now taken price back to support at the green line. We could see another week or two of downward prices in treasuries, but it's likely that we're going to see a bounce in treasuries soon. Here's a chart of gold. A lot of people are calling or perhaps hoping for a bounce in gold, and there is some technical reason to support that. You can see that we're at support at the green line, which was hit back in early 2011. We hit it a few weeks ago, and we've touched off of it again, so we're starting to see the formation of a double bottom. However, there is still no formation of a rising bottom on the gold chart, and therefore, I'm not really ready to get anywhere near optimistic on gold. There is some good reason to think that it will hold this level, but until we see the formation of a rising bottom, I don't want to get optimistic about gold. Oil has uh, hit resistance at its pennant pattern top. That is the line I have drawn in red, and therefore expect oil to pull back on the ETF, probably back into the 2075 price zone. Not a lot of downside, but until it can break that red downward trend line, I wouldn't get too optimistic about oil either. Now that could happen this week. It's not likely to happen, but it could happen. Um, but until that red line is broken, remain neutral to slightly bearish on oil. And fear remains in a downward trend. We see these little blips along the way where people get excited about volatility increasing. We had that last week. But until that downward trend line that I've drawn in red is broken, basically fear is not a factor in this market. All right, so my outlook then, U.S. stocks neutral simply because I think that they're getting a little toppy here. Canadian stocks neutral. Uh, although weaker than the U.S. market, but also not as far to fall from a risk standpoint. Gold bearish, but uh, has some reason to think it could hold support here. And oil, I am neutral on. U.S. stocks are showing signs that the upward trend will at least stall in the short term. And a pullback is very possible. Canadian stocks are improving, but strength is still hard to find. Gold at support and could bounce soon. Oil has rallied into resistance where it is likely to stall. Well, that has been the Stock Scores Market Minutes for May 24th, 2013. Have a great week in the market and trade well.